Yeah, man, we having a fantastic day so far. It's uh, burning up outside. I'm here with a special, a special show. First off, I want to introduce my buddy, my homeboy, Bo. He over here on his phone. Yeah, I was, no, I was waiting for this intro because if you were to skip me, we about to have a problem. <laughs> hey, hey, egos are misplaced. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's too hot to not have one. Hey, look, though, we got we got a fantastic show on there. We got a special guest. Matter of fact, we got two special guests. We got rising welterweight boxing prospect, Kenny K2 Thomas. You can, say, you can say what's up, man. What's hey, up? What's up? Hey, he being too cool, man. He like standing, like he had the uh, club standing, waiting for girls <laughs> to come and say something to him. He playing that cool role. We got his father, world renowned trainer. This is what they're going to be saying on HBO in a few years. World renowned <laughs> trainer, Kenny Thomas Sr. Hey, we got them both in the building, man. It's a pleasure to have them. Um, y'all want to say what's up to everybody? What's going on, everybody? It's, it's, it's your boy K2 up in here. That's what's up. Yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks for having us, Latour. Oh, man, don't be modest now, man. Yeah. You got you to gotta let them know who you are. You got to show out a little bit. <laughs> let them know who you are. Like I said, this is a dynamic duo, father and son, boxing team. Um, rising fast. They, they was here last time we had the boxers here. We had, like, all the young up-and-coming boxers in Indianapolis mm. up here a couple months ago. And I want to ask you, uh, K2, what's been going on since the last time you was up here? Uh, you know, recently after that, you know, I had a fight uh, in Hammond, Hammond, Indiana. Um, went on ahead and we're continuing after that, just been training, uh, waiting for the next bout coming up this weekend, uh, July 30th, in Ham- back in Hammond, Indiana at the Horseshoe Casino. All right, can you tell us, like, exactly what happened in that fight? Because, like... In my last fight? Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's speak up a little bit. Man. You got to let them know that you the champion. You got to be intimidated. You know what I'm saying? They're going to come and try you and I stuff. I don't sound intimidated until I get in the ring, you know? Uh, okay. Okay. I'm, I'm Clark Kent without, outside the ring. Hey, he do got on his glasses, so yeah. don't make you step in that phone booth. Yep, yep. Well, can you tell, <laughs> but, can you tell uh, a little bit about your last fight, though? That last fight, man, it was, it was amazing going into the Horseshoe Casino. That was my first time ever being there. Um... You know, um, a shout out to Bobby Hits and and them for letting me get on that show again. Uh, but yeah, stepping into that horseshoe, it was it was it was live, man. I, I liked it a lot, and uh, it was just a, a different a different atmosphere going in there, and you know, uh, getting my guy out there in the what was the third round? Third round, probably. yeah, yeah. Third, round. third round, got him out of there, um, and we're gonna continue to keep moving forward. And, and I wish y'all could y'all I wish y'all could see the footage of that man. It's like when I was watching, you ever be watching something like you watch kids go upstairs or walk downstairs, they be walking like they gonna fall, and you like if they lean one way, you lean with them. Mm-hmm. And then they lean. When I was watching the fight, I saw the video. K two was hitting the man in his stomach, and he was hitting him hard. And it, and I forgot I was watching boxing, and I felt like I was watching some shit that should have been happening. <laughs> I feel like he was taking advantage of that dude's ribs. <laughs> and, like, every time he punched him, I cringed and shit. I held my rib like, man, I almost broke my rib. <laughs> he was giving the business, man. It was a um, good good show. Um, it, it's a different crowd than you used to. Yeah, a way different crowd, man. I mean, it was like a little small MGM to me. To me, you know, I, I mean, I can't wait to get there, too. But um, that, that, that crowd was amazing. Was you nervous? Not at all. Nah, I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna lie. I was. Uh, <laughs> no, at I first, a little bit. <laughs> now, at first, I was. I was mad because, um, you know, it was my song that I wanted to come out to. What song was you gonna come out to? I forgot what it was, but I went on ahead and switched it, and I, I changed it to uh, Rico. I think Rico Su- uh, Suave. His name is. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What, what Rico think, Suave say, man? <laughs> it was pop. It's called popping. Oh, you ain't got no haters. You ain't popping. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, okay. I think that's his name. His name Rico something. I thought it was about Rico Suave when we was little. You remember that Child song, man? Mexican? Yeah, what was that song? I don't know. Hey. Yeah, I was like, damn, you was really excited about the fight, wasn't you? <laughs> but all right, so what's up with you, uh, the Giant K2? Right, I'll be messing with uh, Kent. This is Kent the Trainer. If Like I was telling my homie Bo, man, if you seen him, you wouldn't know who was the father because Kent be out here, man, looking like he's trying to enter, some, enter something. <laughs> I don't know what he's trying to enter, man. He running around with the V neck on, biceps bulging. I told, <laughs> hey, I told somebody he was roided up. 
you know what I'm saying? Hey, my hate made me start spreading rumors. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They'll be asking hey. me all the time if, I, if, if I'm the fighter or not. Man, hey, I thought he was training for these Olympics. <laughs> What's up, though, man? What was, what was the experience like for you in that uh, baby MGM up in Hammond? Uh, I mean, it, it was a it was a great experience. You know, it was a it was a packed house. It was uh, well in the uh, vicinity of uh, two thousand people um, in in the uh, in, in that in that arena, and um, you know the the atmosphere was electric. Um, you know, it, it was a lot of excitement going on, and you know, even after his fight, you know, the the way he was received, you know. People there are really boxing people. You know, most, most, of course, most of the people that were at the venue come over from Chicago, but they're really boxing people, and uh, you know, you could just tell that. Especially the females. Especially what? The females. Hey, <laughs> hey, all right. Hey, we gonna we gonna be real frank. Have your female count went up since you became a professional <laughs> boxer? Well, oh man, we can't be too frank about that right now. <laughs> Are you no. a girlfriend? No, I, I, well, yeah, I mean, I mean uh, 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 hey, hey, uh, let's take a short break. Uh, hey. Uh, hey, I'm gonna edit that part out. <laughs> I want, hey. I want, hey, the big, the big daddy something. <laughs> big, come on, man. Can you, come on, man. He just. He's just daddy to you. He's a big daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Since, you know, boxing is a brutal sport. When your son does something that you're proud of, can you cry? Or you got to look tough? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just want to know. No, I just, no, no, you know, I can't, no uh, I can't cry anyway. Oh, man. Okay. I just, you, know. I, you know, my, when I do something, when I I know I've done something proud, I ain't never seen no, this man smile so big in my life. Like, exactly. I know, I know tough. I did something proud. Catch, cause it, catch him at home behind closed doors. I, he Man. Boy, I love that boy. <laughs> he, know, he know he he got some coming for his son. I know he's behind so I, I ain't gonna lie. I did after after the after the fight. Um, I did run through the back of the hallway. <laughs> he ran. You ready? He ran. You ready, you ready, you ready for this one? Yeah. I, I ran through the back of the hallway like uh like Joe Jackson did on the <laughs> on the Jackson saying the Beatles, man, Beatles. <laughs> oh man, so like in your short career so far. What's been the biggest achievement, like your biggest accomplishment? Because, again, can you tell me what your record is? I'm 3-0, uh, two, two uh, knockouts. All right, so far with those three fights, what's been the biggest, like, accomplishment that you had? I I think turning pro, period. Turning pro? Turning pro, uh, basically, man. It was just I felt that, you know, that step. It was just taking – it was from going, like, to elementary to, to high school. Oh, yeah. And skipping middle school. It was a big step for me. In middle school, in this case, would be the Olympics. Yeah, <laughs> like skipping the Olympics, going straight yeah, to the pros. Yeah. Did you fight a lot when you was young? A lot. Outside? Did you get in trouble? Yeah. <laughs> 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 What's and people don't understand the discipline it takes to be a boxer. They think yeah. that you just fighting. That's like one of the debates that people get into. Like when people find out that I'm a, a huge boxing fan, they ask me, "Do you like UFC too?" And I explain mm-hmm. to them that it's it's two different. Mm-hmm. It's two different animals, and like boxing, they anybody who really pays attention, they call it the sweet science for a reason. Mm-hmm. And it's like the object of boxing is to hit and not get hit, and people fail to realize that. What What's your take, man? Do you like to mix it up? Do you uh, like? Definitely. I mean, most definitely. When I get in the ring, I know how to. Um, if I'm fighting a brawler, if I'm fighting a bra- if I'm fighting a boxer, um, it don't matter who I. It don't matter who I'm fighting. You know, I get in there. And that's what's so sweet about it. I know how to, you know, change my, you know, change change the way I am, you know. From yeah. when that bell ring to the next round, whatever he wants to do, I can do. And so that's just like adapting. Yeah. Like, being, matter of fact, me and Bo, we had a conversation. He, uh, he like a, a warlord. Like, he like, if we, if we describe our taste in fighting styles, he want to see somebody getting hit, hit in the head with a brick. <laughs> And then he wants to see the next man get in the head with the moon. And then he was like, what you doing with Saturn? Nothing. Let me see it. I'm going to hit him in the head with Saturn. He just like the brutality. He don't want nobody to duck. He want to see Rock of Soccer. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So he's yeah. he's more like a My, My Orga yeah. fan as opposed yeah. to a Mayweather yeah. fan. Right. Yeah, even in, in that, that sense. That boxing field, I don't like I don't like seeing you get beat so brutal, you know. Uh, it's just it's not cool at all. It's, People like – it's it's – it's like the spectator of when you just watch it, you don't understand what these fighters put themselves through, like their lives on the line. And people don't understand that that the politics of boxing 
like you have promoters that cash out on fighters all the time. And what I mean cash out is when they see that you at the end of your road, they sacrifice you. And and what I mean sacrifice, it's a literal sacrifice. It's not just a figure of speech. They send you in there and they hope you don't get killed. But if you do, it's part of the game. Like they doing Roy Jones. Yeah, Roy Jones is his own goddamn worst enemy, and we won't talk about that right now. Yeah, <laughs> please, I, please don't. Yeah, I didn't know he, I didn't know he was still boxing. Uh, he, he ain't. You sure? He just go out there and get knocked out. I thought he just boxed a couple weeks no ago. More. He ain't boxing no more. He's just out there. Uh, hey, that's a touchy subject. It man. is, and we won't discuss it. <laughs> hey, K2, hey, hey, K1, K1 over there, he messed with me because he know Roy Jones, my favorite fighter of all time. And he ought to be talking about how Roy Jones was forced to lean back a few times. But with that said, we will acknowledge the fact that prime Roy Jones beat anybody in the vicinity. Can, yeah, can we, we all agree with that? We, we, I, I can definitely agree with that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I know it hurts for you to say he got to lean back because he's like, quit, Roy. Like, quit. Like, you were only going to Now, I don't even give a fuck no more. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to tell you, Roy Jones like an incorrigible child. You know, don't go out on the street, you're going to hit by a car. Blue, Roy. I just said, don't go out the street. You go, Bloop. Roy, what the fuck wrong with you? I think he's getting ready to fight again, actually. Bloop. I think he is. Where Roy at? I guess that's how I get hit by cars. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's where I'm at with Roy right now. I just hope he make it out because mm-hmm. I'm surprised he still commentate how he do, man. He still got his scruples. Yep. And the reason why, though, because he don't take beatings. No, he don't. He just take one hitters and he's yeah. done. And those yeah, be the worst ones, though, sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like the ones he be taking. Because, mm-hmm. I mean... It's like his body, like, refused to take a punishment. Right. And so I was like, I'm just going to lay down on the first hit. Mm-hmm. You ain't going to put me through this shit because you want to go through it. <laughs> his body separated from his brain. Yeah. Hey, but I won't talk about my favorite like that. Y'all got me out here and shit. <laughs> but what I was I was on, though, man, I was on the politics of boxing, boxing. And it's like when people criticize fighters like Floyd, it's, they say that he don't take tough fights, which is a stupid argument considering that Floyd's been fighting tough since he – Start fighting, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's the casual fans who latched on at the end of his career who criticize it the most. And so I want to ask y'all, do y'all got a particular br- blueprint? Like, I know me and uh, K1, we'd had discussions where it's like you want a reasonable trek to the top, but you don't want no easy. You don't want a padded record. Because, mm-hmm. like, fighters who do that, they get exposed when they finally mm-hmm. get up there against somebody good. <clears throat> right. So. What type of opponents are you looking for right now? For I mean, it's, it's you know, it, again, it's like like we discussed. It, it's definitely a, a, a progressive uh, move, you know, a progressive ascension in, in terms of the level of opposition. You 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 know, each fight you you want to gradually get to that point. Yeah. I mean, you know, of course, early, early, the early stages, nobody really takes the tough. The toughest fights out there because the the toughest fights you you want to um, allow those guys to get to that level as well in terms of not just skill level but in terms of popularity to uh, you know build the uh, the attraction and and therefore the attraction would would, ge- would generate more revenue and that's why this is called prize fighting and people don't understand like it's it's uh, in addition to being a sport it's a job. Mm-hmm. And to grow in your job, you have to make sure that you're ready to go to different positions. Yeah. Like, talent-wise, there's no doubt that K2 has all talent in the world. But you have to, like, you as a father, you have to make sure that you foster that talent and may help it grow instead of rushing or whatever. And people don't people don't understand that, man. Right, right. And they don't understand, like he was just mentioning about you being proud of him being your son, like, you got to look out for your son's best interest mm-hmm. in everything because no matter who he signs with as a manager or what promos- promotional company, he's an object. Like, they might have some sort MVP. of – Go ahead, buddy. He's a real MVP. Yeah, yeah, he's a real MVP. <laughs> Ain't too many out here like him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tearing up. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm hey, but I'm, I'm going to get back to that, though, because that, that's, uh, that's something else I want to talk about. But, like, to – I always say I'm a commodity. I say AKA a commodity, and people don't understand. I say that I'm beneficial to anybody who deal with me. Mm-hmm. Like, if you link up with me, it's, I feel like we can grow. You can benefit off me. And that's how, like, they treat fighters. Mm-hmm. So, 
even if you feel like the management has his best interest, it's always the monetary.